welcome to you all this is olido de today we will discuss the design of a plate girder plate girder is nothing but uh, it is a larger version of a beam in case of buildings and normal structures we usually use beam which is which stays in between two columns but when it is a bridge when the span is too large you can see the span between two piers the span is too large over 20 30 meter or more than that and the loads are too heavy then we have to provide a plate girder in between two piers the function of the plate girder is basically it takes the load from the deck slab and it transfers the load to the piers on which it rests uh, a plate girder may be of uh, made of steel may be made of concrete so this one is made of steel you can see uh, we will discuss the design part of only uh, a welded plate girder it may be bolted or it may be welded the most important concept of this plate girder is this one the flanges of the plate girder resist the bending moment and the web plate of the plate girder resist the shear force usually we used to provide i sections as a plate girder uh, so the flanges resist the bending moment and the web resist the shear force you can see this is a longitudinal section of a plate girder uh, normally this this is the this is the top flange this is the bottom flange and the middle part is a web and few other members are connected in this plate girder you can see these are different members so this vertical members you can see these are the stiffeners stiffener is nothing but a plate or you can say a flat which is provided vertically or sometimes horizontally to give support to the web it has various functions so we are going to discuss it later uh, in this picture you can see this vertical things are vertical uh, stiffeners and longitudinal longitudinal stiffeners are not provided in this example but in this figure you can see uh, this vertical stiffeners are called intermediate transverse stiffeners but longitudinal stiffeners are called are known as longitudinal stiffeners and it is provided horizontally and when a transverse stiffeners is provided on the support that means this one this one is called end bearing stiffeners so there are basically two type of stiffener vertical and horizontal horizontal is longitudinal stiffener vertical is intermediate transverse stiffener the intermediate stuff transverse stiffener which is provided at the support is known as end bearing stiffener now we have cut this longitudinal uh, view in different sections so this is a a section if we cut this section we will find the figure like that this one so this is the main i section and this two plates you can see are the end bearing uh, stiffener or end bearing plate you can say right again if we cut this section in this c c axis then we will get the plan that means the top view the top view will be like this the end bearing stiffener is provided both sides but the intermediate stiffeners are provided in the single side by providing a particular spacing between them right so this is a, a plan and uh, another view if we cut from here bb section we will get uh, the view like this uh, the intermediate transverse stiffener and longitudinal a part of longitudinal stiffener uh, you can see like this now coming to the design step uh, this is a simple problem given here step by step we will do this problem the 100 kN per meter is a subjected udl and this thing the basic calculation of load you can see we have to uh, find out the maximum bending moment by the simply supported beam formula wl square by 8 and maximum shear force that is wl by 2 at support this is at the mid span this is at the support the first and foremost step of uh, this design is design of web for web this formula and for uh, the depth of the web this formula you have to use 
and for the thickness of the wave this formula you have to use here uh, one term is there that is k k is basically d by tw now this d by tw you have to assume uh, you have to satisfy both the criteria which is given in clause number this one 8611a uh, that is given here 8611a when transfer stiffness are not provided then t by tw is less than 200 epsilon and another one is clause 8612a when transfer stiffness are not provided d by tw should be less than 345 epsilon f square so satisfying both the cases we have to we are taking dy tw is 180 if we take 180 it is lesser than 345 it is lesser than 200 then we have to provide this 180 here in place of k and finally we will some get some value of d and and some value of um, uh, tw so this is the final dimension of the wave 1800 millimeter into 16 millimeter step number two design of flange in design of flange the required area you have to find out first then we are assuming that the width of flange is 0.3 times of the depth of wave that we have uh, find out in the earlier step and from here we can find the dimension of flange easily so these things are given in this figure and uh, regarding this classification we have to find out b by tf and you have to check the value uh, from table 2 mind it this b is only the, the outstand part of that uh, flange and now after finding out b by tf we have to check it with table number 2 in is 800 see this is welded section and for welded section b, b by tf it is less than 8.4 epsilon that's why we can say the flange is a plastic the next part part number three step number three check for bending strength in bending strength this formula you have to check this formula is um, previously known it is given in clause number 8212 yes this formula of md you can find it in this clause clause number 8212 md is beta b z p a y by gamma m0 uh, now the main thing is to find out z p z zpz is nothing but the area into distance from the equal area axis that means uh, see this bending strength is only applicable for flange because we know flange takes the bending moment that's why this area is the area of the flange and this distance is from the centroid of the flange to the equal area axis that is d minus tf by 2 and 2 is multiplied because two flanges are there in the figure after finding out the md you have to check it should be greater than the m max right then this is safe in bending strength the next step is step 4 check for shear capacity we know the wave takes the shear that's why this is applicable on shear only so before that we have to find out or check it out the d by tw actual and this is you can see the value it is lesser than 200 epsilon and 345 epsilon m square that is okay now we have to find out the shear capacity of the wave by a simple post critical method which is given in clause number 8422 part a yes clause number 8422 part a this is a simple post critical method in the next page we can see uh, see the shear capacity is basically vcr vcr means av into tau b here av is the area of the uh, wave but tau b tau b depends on lambda w there are three conditions regarding the value of lambda w right so we have to first find out the value of lambda w by this formula in this formula one new term is here that is tau c r e so the first thing we have to do is to find out this tau c r e this tau c r e is equal to this formula where k v kv you can see here kv is 5.35 when transfer stiffness are provided only at supports that is our case all right so kv will be 5.35 and mu is the poisons ratio we can take it as a constant as 0 0.3 now checking out in the problem 
see first thing tau CRE in from this formula KV is taken 5.35 mu 0.3 and after getting tau CRE we have provided this in lambda W formula and uh, after getting the lambda W formula we have to check in which condition it is in lambda w no, lambda w is in the third condition because it is greater than 1.2 so to find out tau b we have to use this formula yes this is used here you can see this formula is used here and finally we are getting tau b which is replaced here and finally vc is found and it should be greater than the v max the next step is a check for torsional buckling uh, this thing you don't have to do because in the question it is given that the uh, girder or beam is laterally supported throughout. That's why this thing is not required. Coming to the step 6, it is a flange to wave connection. Flange to wave connection it is simple. You have to assume a size of weld and uh, the unit length strength of the weld. You have to find out in a very conventional way and then uh, QW is the load which is coming on that weld, right? So the value of uh, QW is this one. You can uh, see all the values given here. But the thing is there, it is multiplied with 1 by 2, half. Because when the load is transferring from flange to wave, there are two welds. That's why the strength, subjected strength, the subjected load is divided into two parts. That's why it is divided by 2. In the next part, here you can see the this Iz you have to find out first. This Iz is basically the moment of inertia about Zz axis of this uh, one wave and two flanges. So it is done like this. Uh, first you take it as one rectangle. Then the moment of inertia will be Bf that is the width and capital D that is the overall depth Bd cube by 12. Now this hashed portion, this blank portion, uh, it is drawn by hashed. This hashed portion, uh, you have to deduct. The width of hashed portion is Bf minus Tw and the depth of hashed portion is small d. So Bd cube by 12 again, it should be reduced from the total uh, section, total rectangular section. And in this way, we can find out the z. So, uh, putting all the values in formula of QW, we are uh, checking that QW means the applied load is lesser than the capacity of the weld. That means the connection is safe. The next part of this uh, problem is explained in the next video. Thank you.